So this video is going to have a little bit of an identity crisis. I couldn't decide whether I wanted to make a tutorial video or a time lapse kind of walkthrough of how I made this scene. But um, I'm going to do a little bit of both. During the video, I'm going to be voiceovering and talking about the process in which I made this, giving a little bit of a how-to onto the different aspects of the scene. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and thanks for tuning in. If you like this type of video, comment down below. Let me know. I'll make some more in the future. So here I started off by adding a plane to the scene and extruding two edges to form the walls. I added a solidify modifier to the mesh to give it a little bit more dimension and depth. Make sure to tick the even thickness under the modifier setting so you don't get a weird warp in your geometry. For this merry-go-round with a sphere that had dimensions of eight segments with six rings, you can modify that by clicking the drop down in the bottom left corner when you add the mesh to your scene. I selected the whole mesh and deleted only the faces to leave behind a skeleton to later add geometry onto. This is the technique I used for every major prop in the scene. Following the reference, I deleted some edges where I didn't want there to be any geometry. I added some vertices to round out the mesh, and then I added a skin modifier to implement the aforementioned geometry around the skeleton of the mesh. To get to the right size, I selected all the edges by pressing A and scaled the width by doing Control plus A. After it was the size I like, I added a subdivision modifier to round it out a bit. I would only recommend subdividing it once so you don't have too much unnecessary geometry geometry like I did on this mesh in particular. After that, I added a cylinder for the post in the middle and extrude the top and bottom to match the reference. With the swings, I just added a cube and merged the top two vertices to make a triangle. I went ahead and added a couple more edges to the skeleton so it matched the reference. You can do this by creating an edge loop on the edge and beveling the new vertice with Control plus Shift plus B. Then it was the same process of before of just deleting only the faces, adding the skin modifier, and subdividing it. You can delete only the faces by selecting the whole mesh by pressing A, clicking X, and then selecting only faces. For the rings at the top, I just duplicated existing faces from the swings top bar and separated it by selecting it with control plus P. Then I extruded it along normals with control plus E and beveled the edges. The chain was my favorite part, I just added in a torus and scaled it horizontally to make it link shape. I duplicated it, flipped it 90 degrees and positioned it below the top rings. Then I added an array modifier and it was done. The slide was the most complex prop in the scene by far. I started with a cylinder and a cube for the post. Making the slide, I extruded a plane from the bottom of the post landing so they would match exactly. Then I separated the mesh and made it into a slide shaped object. I grabbed the edges on either side and extruded them up to make the sides of the slide. And then it was just a solidify modifier and of course I ticked even thickness. For the railings and siding of the stairs, I made an edge connecting the vert from the top and the bottom stair, then I extruded it on either side separating the two halves and solidified the bottom while deleting the faces on the top. In the skeleton, I added loop cuts for more posts on the railing, then the skin modifier and the subdivision modifier again. The last main part was the brackets under the landing. I duplicated faces from all four sides of the post, separated it by selection, and formed them into an L bracket. Finally, I just beveled the connecting edges and used a solidify modifier. The jungle gym was the easiest prop by far. 
All I did here was add a cube, deleted the faces to make a skeleton, and deleted the bottom edges. From there, it was the same thing, skin modifier and subdivision surface modifier. I applied those and then added an array modifier and separated them just enough so the two legs would be perfectly overlapping. Finally, I was just stacking them according to the reference by duplicating the main mesh and holding down control while I moved it so they snapped together. Here I made three main materials for the playground equipment. All I did was bring up the metallic node to 0 0.309, the roughness to 0 0.265, and change the color. Once I had the first material, it was just a matter of duplicating it and changing the colors accordingly. Here I made the doors, all I did was add four loop cuts vertically and one horizontal. Then I beveled the vertical ones until they were the size I liked and extruded them in. From there, I added one more vertical loop cut in the middle of each door and beveled it slightly. Then I extruded it in a little bit so it would give the illusion of a gap in the door. Here I went on to make the symbols on each door. For the triangle, it was just a cube with the top two vertices merged together and an inset face on either side. Then I beveled the edges to make them softer and deleted the inset faces. I connected the open mesh in the middle by clicking on an edge and pressing the F key to create a new face. Finally, I beveled the edges. The star was created by starting with a cylinder that had 10 edges. I selected every other edge and scaled them in on the X and Y axis until it resembled the star. Then again, inset, bevel edges, delete inset faces, add connecting faces, and bevel the edges. The umbrella was easily the most complex symbol, but it was still easy. Again, I started with a cylinder for the top and cut it in half vertically. I added a cube for the handle and extruded it to make it into a hook. Again, the exact same process as before, inset, bevel edges, delete inset faces, add connecting faces, and bevel the edges. Finally, I added a sphere on top that was cut in half to make a nib. Then it was just aligning the props and scene to match the reference while also using the space I had wisely. I fine-tuned the size and width of the props here as well, but you'll most likely find yourself adjusting them throughout the lighting phase as well. I reused the same materials from before and added a new blue one because I realized that the umbrella was blue in the show. I just duplicated the material again and grabbed the color from my reference. This is where I made the materials for the walls and the floor. For the walls, I used a screen grab I took from the show and edited it in Photoshop so it only contained the drawings on the walls. To make sure everything fit right, I positioned my camera to view the walls head on, and then I hit the U button and selected project from view. Then I went into the UV editor and positioned it accordingly. For the floors, I found a sand texture on Texture Haven that I imported using the Node Wrangler add-on. To negate the stretching on the floors, I selected the floor faces, hit the U button, and selected project from view. I played around with the color of the floors by adding a hue slash saturation node to the color input.
This is where I go in and add color to the main props. It's the same material from before, I just added all of them to each object and selected the faces that I wanted to change the color of. Select the corresponding material, and then click to sign. I recommend pulling up a reference here if you want to try and be one for one with the show, that's what I did. If you're just playing around though, feel free to add colors as you wish. You can quickly select faces by going into x-ray mode, alt Z, pressing C and then using your cursor as a paintbrush to select the faces. Once you're done, just click your right mouse button. Another good way is to select a face and then press Ctrl and Numpad Plus. That will select all adjacent faces to your current selection. Here you see me go back to the textures for the walls and the floor. For this, I added a grunge map on the roughness channel on the walls, just to give a slight variation to the reflections. As for the floors, all I did was change the image and the base color node to something closer to the show. Now I'm putting in my camera and I'm using an add-on called Isocam. It's free, I recommend grabbing it. I import a true Isocam and frame it into my scene by playing with the transform settings under the object properties panel and the focal length under the camera settings. I also had a ground plane and scaled it up far enough to make it the background of the entire shot. As for the lighting, I ended up going with a really standard three point setup. There's no set way to light the scene, it's all going to be up to you and how you like it. I added color to all my lights, my fill light had a soft orange, the key light had a cool indigo, my rim light was a hot pink to match the jumps suits from the show. As for the ground plane, it was also a turquoise to match the jumpsuits from the show. Finally, I added a secondary fill light that was just an off-white to illuminate the scene a little bit better. This segment here, I just added some smaller props like the cookie tins from the show to fill up the scene a little bit more. They're just a cylinder with an extrusion in the middle and all the edges were beveled. Then came the fence, which was pretty simple. It was just a cube with the top two edges slightly beveled and an array modifier applied to fill up the walls. Then I added two more cubes and stretched them out and put them up against a post so I had something connecting them together.
Here are the final touches where you can see me adjusting the lights and the colors, as I mentioned before. The scene actually took two hours to light because I struggled so much with getting something I liked. Don't get discouraged if it doesn't look right right away. Keep at it and it'll eventually come together. Wow, look at that, new camera and a uh, new mic. I don't know if you guys noticed, but during the voiceover, I used my brand new microphone. Moving up in the world, baby. I wanted to thank you guys for coming by and watching the new video. Of course, tune in next Wednesday and Friday for my two new videos coming up. I post weekly or twice weekly, whatever you call that. Also, if you guys like this sort of format, the voiceover tutorial, let me know. I'm happy to try it out again. Uh, I really enjoyed making this video. It took a lot of time to put it together, and I'm really happy that it came out. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you again for coming by. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.